So in this video, we are going to add some little kind of googly eyes to our two slime players for a slime volleyball game because y you have to, right? I mean, we've got angle two, we've got get point and direction, and we want to be true to the source material. You kind of have to um, give it the little googly eyes. Now, this is back to this is back to classics. I'm not making this a challenge and then showing you the solution afterwards. I'm figuring it out live right now. I've thought about it a little bit, so hopefully it goes well because I'm pretty sure now that we've got get point and direction and stuff like that, you'll see another use for it, and it'll be pretty good. Um, I think there's definitely a way to do this better. We've had eyes following our mouse before and stuff like that uh, in previous units just by like, I don't know, setting it equal to some coordinate divided by whatever so it stays within a certain location. But we're just going to use the unit 8 stuff because I think I have an idea of how to solve it using that unit 8 stuff. So first thing we're going to have to do is add more to player 1. We'll do player 1 and then we'll, uh, you know, as always, sacrilegiously, uh, is that the right word? Sac religiously here we go ah look at that google knows what i'm saying involving or committing sacrilege violation injurious treatment yeah <laughs> yeah so sacrilegiously is right we're gonna sacrilegiously um you know copy and paste from the player one one also but also like we're gonna make like weird eye like player one specific eyes here instead of making you know using uh full object oriented programming so, all right, let's go. We're going to get the player one, uh, I white. And that's going to be equal to a circle, a circle at, well, player one dot center X plus, well, what's the player one's radius? 60. So we want to be right at the edge. Um... Oh, uh, we're just going to play around with this. I guess I could calculate it out. But if I go 60 and 60, it'll be kind of off of it uh, because that, of course, will be further. I could be using distance to calculate this myself. And probably I should because if I ever decide to change the size of the player, I really should be doing instead of magical numbers like calculating this based off of the distance. Um, actually, I could even use get point and direction here. I should totally do that. I should totally do that. All right. We're gonna we're gonna do this. We're going to um, let's say like i x i y is gonna be equal to get point in direction, and we're gonna start from player one dot center center x player one dot center y. And then the angle is going to be maybe a little lower than 45. Let's say like 50 degrees. This I'm okay being a magical number because I'll just adjust it to however I want it to be. And the distance should, of course, be um, the player's radius. Oh, it's not radius, though. What is it? Like player.width? Player.width. Uh, and then this way, when we make the circle, we can make it the i, x, the i, y... And then we'll make it a radius of maybe 10. And the fill, I guess we'll have to make the fill. Is it going to look weird? I'm going to make the fill white. And then the border uh, equals black. Let's see if this makes an eyeball. Player, lol, it's not player. It's P1. I'm just going to fix that without zooming in. Okay. That's way too far. It doesn't look bad, but it's way too far. Why is it way too far? Because the width is 60, so half the width, the radius is actually 30, so we want to go 30 away. Sorry. The angle, I still want to have at 50. Hold on, let me zoom in because I'm doing some stuff here. I, I was just changing the angle from 50, but instead of the full width, because the width is all the way, we want to do the width divided by 2. And now... Bada boom. <laughs> That's so creepy looking. Uh, maybe we just want to put it at 45. That looks a little too far down. We'll just put this at 45. I'll fix that zoomed out. Sure. Looks good enough for me. So that is the eyeball. Maybe let's go the distance divided by 
a little bit of a bigger number, maybe. Well, and here's where, as soon as I don't divide by two, I'm like, actually, I prefer doing multiplied by uh, 0 0.4 instead of 0 0.5 to make a little closer in. That's looking a little real, a little more real to form. Let's try 0.43. I like that. I kind of want to move it up on the angle. Let's go just to 40. Yeah, that eye, look at that eyeball right there. That's the eyeball. But the eyeball's not done yet because we got. it's got to be a googly eye. It's got to be following the ball. So now we're going to have to make a, we're going to have to make a, the issue with doing it by get point. Ah, okay. We're also going <laughs> to, oh no, we can just have this move at the exact same speed as the player. The eye parts can just all have the exact same velocity as the player always. Yeah, that'll do it. So that way it'll follow, it'll just be stamped to the player. I guess I can make it a group. That might be the best way to do it. But then I think I'd have to change a lot of stuff because, yeah, so we're not going to, we're not going to do, we're, just so that this is shorter, we're not going to do that. All right. Now we need to make the player one um, pupil. And that will be a circle with the same coordinates as player one i white dot center x, player one i white dot center y. Um, we'll make the radius maybe three, and the fill will be black. So now we'll have a pupil on there. Bottom boom, we got that pupil. Oh, that looks awesome. Okay, now what we need to do is update it so that the eye white follows the player, and that the pupil is always following the eye white, I think is the way I want to do that. So on step, whenever we move the player, we're going to say the player one dot, or player, player one i white dot center x. We're going to plus equals the player one dot dx. Oh, I didn't save this from before. Wait, I didn't save this from before. Maybe I undid a bunch of stuff. I don't know. I thought I fixed that that order. Um, and then the player one i i white dot center y plus equals player one dot dy. So this should just have the i white move just stuck to that same part of the player without having to make it a group for the sake of time. Though I think making it a group is honestly the best thing. I just would have to like rework the entire program, I think. So we're not doing that. Uh, and then I'll now make the player one pupil dot center x equal to the player one i white dot center x. And we'll do the same thing with a center y. All right, so let's, before we get any further, let's just see if this moves the blue player around nicely. Yes, the blue, uh-oh. <laughs> Why is it doing that? <laughs> Why is it doing that? <laughs> because, what? Why is the eye, ah, it's under there. And it keeps going further down every time I jump. <laughs> um, all right, debugging time. Uh, am I just going to have to do this the right way? Okay, I think you always get this when you're programming and you're just like, should I do this the right way? Or should I do it the way that's going to be like hacky and quicker? And sometimes the hacky and quicker way ends up making you take even longer to go. I'm going to try one hacky and quicker way and see if I can do this. So... I do get point direction, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get i dist x will be equal to the player one i white dot center x minus the player one dot center x. And then the player i dist y will be equal to the player one i white dot center center y minus the player one dot center 
y. So now that I have like, I use get point and direction to get that coordinate. And now I'm storing the distance in the x and the distance in the y. So that I can always just set, um, instead of using the velocity, because it's doing some weird stuff, I'm always going to set its center x to be equal to, to be equal to player one dot center y x plus the, what's it called? I distance x plus I distance x. I distance x. And we'll do the same thing here. Its center y will be equal to the player one, player one dot center y plus the i distance y. This should do it. i distance x is not defined. Oh, i dist x. I just, I typed out all of distance here and it's just dist. That was my issue. All right, I'm not gonna zoom in to fix that. All righty, the eye is moving around with it. You do see it kinda, yeah, it's like when it stops moving because I reset it back to zero. That's why the eye was going down is because to, to make it so I, don't, I never get stuck in the ground, I reset the player to zero. So you can kind of see the eye like dipping down for a second and then resetting to where it's supposed to go. Um, so that's not great. But we're going to mark that as a do not fix for now because this video is already long enough. You're definitely not going to see me redo this all for the red player. I might make a video where I like fix it and then I'm like, hey, this is when I wasn't crushed for crunched for time. Here's the almost right way to fix it. I don't think I'm ever going to make a group out of it, but that's really the right way to fix it. Um, okay, let's zoom out a tiny bit. I think that's too far. All right, we got those things following around. Now what we need to do is now that we have the pupil following around, we're actually going to, from the pupil, reset it to be always kind of looking at the ball and moving around a little bit. So we have to make it follow the player. So that's how we just follow the eyeball. That's why we have it following the eyeball there. But now I think just here and on step, we're going to have it constantly be following the the ball a little bit and the the eyes i y radius is 10 so we're probably gonna go like eight as my as my get direct point and direction distance here all right so over here to make the googly eye happen we are going to set the player one pupil dot center x to be equal to get point This is where my, my lack of uh, understanding of, of, what's it called? Python, like, could I just do this dot center y? We'll try it. That seems like it's weird, but I mean, it returns a thing and a thing. So why don't it return a thing? You know, like, it should work. Otherwise, I'll just make two local variables and then store them separately. So I'm going to set the center x and the center y of the pupil to be from the current pupil. So player one pupil dot center x and the player one pupil dot center y. I'm going to have to get the angle. So now I'm going to make a, a local variable angle one, or maybe I'll call it p1 angle because eventually I will make a p2 angle. It would be the angle two. So be the angle from the player one pupil dot center x, the player one pupil dot center y to the balls center x and the balls center y. Um, so now I got the angle from the pupil pointing towards the ball and I'm gonna now reset the pupil's coordinates to be uh, the from where the pupil, ooh, close. This would screw things up. That would be a hilarious bug. I almost wanna leave it just to see it. Because what's going to happen here is the very first instant, the pupil's at the center, so then it'll go, but then the, it's going to recalculate it from the pupil's new center. So I actually need to be using the player one I white center and the player one, player one I white center Y. This line's going to be massive. Let me just do like, do one of these. Hopefully that'll be all right with it. 
Um, so the player one dot center x and center y, the player one pupil center x and center y is going to get set to the point starting from the center of the eye. And I'm using the eye because the eye doesn't, isn't going to be googly, googly eyes around. Um, let's get rid of a second center y. Using the angle, and again, because the pupil is going to constantly be moving, I really should be using the player one eye white here and the player one eye white here because that's the fixed spot and otherwise the pupil it, it's going to move and it's going to change its angle so that fixed part of the eye i'm going to reset the pupils center x and center y to be the the point that's the distance from so starting from the center of the eye pointing towards the ball and we'll use player one angle to point towards the ball and a distance of eight because the radius of sorry a distance of four because the radius is 10. Sorry, a distance of eight because the radius is 10. So what this should do, what this should do is, and as long as, you know, this part's okay too. Uh, let's just see it. Let's run it. See if it works. Get, oh, lol. Get point in dir. Get point in direction. Oh my god, it follows, it follows the ball. <laughs> it looks so gross. We need to, all right, but it is following it. So let's talk about it. Let's talk, uh oh, what have I done? Where are we? All right, let's talk about it. Now that we saw that it works, let me zoom out a little bit because that line was really big. That's cool. I love Python. I really like, I love Python that I can just like, hey, this returns two values. So instead of setting two separate var like variables, I can just be like, I'm gonna set the player one center X and the player was center Y to the two values that coordinate that get point and direction returns. So here's how it works. Got the eye, the white of the eyeball, center of that, and that's kind of where the, eye, the pupil is gonna be moving around in. We're getting the angle from the center of that eye, the center of the white of the eye towards the ball, looking up at the ball. Now we have the angle that it's pointing towards it. Then we're going to set the pupil's coordinates to um, some new coordinates starting from the origin, the center of that uh, white, going in the direction that we just got of, you know, the direction from the white to the ball. And we're going to go out a certain amount of distance. Eight was obviously too much because it was along the edge of the ball. So let's try six. And I also kind of want to make the googly eye a little bit bigger. So why don't I make the pupil instead of a radius of three. Let's, let's kind of go crazy. I kind of want to do a radius of six because I think googly eyes look better if they're like kind of big. Let's see. Um, almost, it's still too far, but you see, you see it always constantly following the ball there and it's super cool. We'll even look if it bounces below me. Oh, it's so cool. We got the googly eye working. Let's just make it so that we don't have like this, this frog eye where the pupil's kind of outside of the eyeball. And we'll fix that by just changing the distance that we send out in the, uh, so by the way, this is actually all one line, right? Um, in the get point and direction, we'll change this distance to maybe, let's try just three. Oh my gosh, the googly eyes work. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> all right, this video is long enough. Um, honestly, you know, it's working, which is super cool. I'm gonna kind of do not, do not fix this. I will eventually make a, uh, a red fix, but I'm not going to do that right now because it'll add another 10 minutes to the video. And this video is, I think, like maybe going to beat a record of how long it is. So I'll, you know, I'll stop here. We got our googly eye working. It's super cool. Um, and the only thing I would really fix is I'd probably try to make the player and the eye like all a group. Or maybe I'd fix when I'm like hitting the bat the bottom so I don't get stuck on the floor. I'd reset the eye back up also. Something so you don't get this weird little jitter over there. I don't know if you can see it in the video. There's a little jitter. Um, but it's like kind of a non non-consequential bug. Um, super cool. The eyes following the ball. I love it. It worked. See you next time. I hold on, let me make a guess. I think this video was. I think like 25 minutes. I'm, it's, that's literally just for myself. You already see how long the video is, but I'll have a nice laugh after I stop recording here and realize like, uh-oh, this is actually 33 minutes long. <laughs> All right, I'll see you next time.